Hello, my Bell Papels Nation. How's everyone doing today? Hopefully, everyone's having a great day. If not, I hope it gets better from here. Holy crap, that just fell. Ugh. All right. It is Christmas Eve. Uh, probably not for everyone, but where I'm at right now, it is Christmas Eve. And that makes me excited. I love Christmas Eve. I have cooked my ass off all day. And yes, because I've cooked my ass off all day, I am wearing a jacket. Now, we'll go ahead and tell you why. Because in through there where the thermostat is, it is piping hot. It is toasty. It is warm. In here, it is not. And the reason why it's pipey, toasty, warm in there is because I have been cooking my ass off all freaking day. So, the heat has barely had a chance to kick on because everything in through there is so nice and warm. But all the way back here, not so much. So, yeah, I got I, it's chilly. It's freaking cold outside, though. Like, right now, it is zero degrees Fahrenheit. Clear skies. Real fill of negative 13. Negative 23. Sorry. It's 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 a little fucking nipply. All right, but yes, yeah, so I've cooked my ass off. It's Christmas Eve. I I love it. Uh, I I love cooking so much. It's one of my most favorite hobbies. And hence it being Christmas Eve, everyone, please have a safe and happy holiday. Whether you celebrate Christmas or any other holiday, I don't know them all, or I would name them. Be safe. Be very cautious in your travels. I don't know about where you guys live, but here the roads are quite treacherous. It's literally nothing but ice with a little bit of snow on top of it. But other than that, hope everyone has a safe and wonderful holiday. Hope everyone gets to eat way too freaking much and get all the presents that you never wanted. Because that's how presents work. I get a bunch of things I never want unless I get it myself. And it's like... Yes, I, this is what I've always wanted, but you already knew. I don't care. I'm still happy. <laughs> All right. We've chit-chatted enough. Let's get into this story. Now, I know normally on Saturdays we do Lazy Masquerade, but I didn't get to do my Mr. Ballin' video Friday because I wanted to go ahead and get uh, the last of Too Many Spirits of Watcher. If you haven't watched them, go watch them. They are hilarious. I wanted to get the last one in of it before Christmas came around. So I figured today I'll do a Mr. Ballin' video. Because I, I'm pretty sure I've narrowed down what I want to do next through Lazy Masquerade. But I'm going to have... The old lady watch a few of them tell me if you know they're inter I don't I do not watch anything previous to watching it right now. First time I've ever seen this video. Now there has been cases where I've watched a video through a different channel and then watched a video through Mr. Ballin or vice versa. And it's the same story and I, I might know what's going on, but I'll still watch it because they all have a little bit more detail than the other and so on and so forth. So I'm going to have her watch a couple of them, tell me what she thinks about them. And she thinks that, you know, they're pretty interesting. Then I will, we will, we'll watch them together. All right. So it is Christmas Eve. We are here with a Mr. Ballin. What better on Christmas Eve than a Mr. Ballin, Ballin a plate of cookies and a big old glass of milk. Plate of cookies and some coffee. That's what's better. All right, let's go ahead and get into this story. Go ahead, turn on lights down low, put on something comfy, go up with something special. Let's get intrigued. Oh, shit. Before we get into this story, let me tell you what today's story is. Family hunted by a pack of unidentified creatures, the Palomira Wolves. Right, that is how you pronounce that, right? Palomira. See, family hunted by a pack of unidentified creatures. The Palmyra, Palmyra, Palmyra wolves. Palmyra, Adrian. Let's just this, this do it. When I was a kid, one of my favorite places to go in the whole world was my grandmother's house. 
to grandma's house we go hell yeah she lived in south paris maine about 2,000 people live there totally rural and there's lots of forests so literally over the river and through the woods to grandma's house we go everywhere we get to my grandmother's big farmhouse and we just immediately go off into the woods behind her property because i'm feeling weird today people i am sorry i do apologize ahead of time it's the peppermint in the air like catnip to me oh <gasps> catnip i watch videos of catnip messing with tigers and lions and lynx Yeah, if you didn't watch my previous video, go watch it. Uh, I believe it was Coffee House Crime. I asked if catnip messes with, like, big cats, like, you know, lions and tigers and bears on my... Not the bears, though, but lions and tigers and stuff. And the subscriber was like, yeah, actually, it does. Uh, look up uh, catnip and big cats, and I did. And I was like, the cutest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. I have never seen a lion just rip open a bag full of catnip and sit there and rub on it like a kitty kitty. It was so cute. Look it up. It's amazing. It was like this vast expanse of wilderness. But as soon as it got dark at night, we would all be quick to go back inside because there was huge animals that lived in the wilderness of Maine and you just didn't want to be out there past. Needed some catnip. It's dark. And at night I'd be looking out at this dark forest from the safety of my room and I would always be so scared that a set of eyes were going to look back at me from somewhere in this dark forest. Luckily that never happened. <laughs> no, it just didn't end this fucking life. I, I, it would end mine too, buddy. I feel you, Mr. Ball. I feel you. What's going on outside? Ah! To me, it did happen to a family just north of my grandmother's house. And it wasn't oh. just one set of eyes, okay. it was five. But before we get into today's... One's too many. Five is overkill. Like, fuck that. No, bro. Time to call quits. Pack your shit and move. Story. If you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you come to the right place because that's all I do and I post three, four, even five times every week. Like I said, a Mr. Bone classic. If that's of interest to you, then I would encourage you to waterboard the like button and then subscribe to this channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of my weekly uploads. All right, let's get into today's run, story. Run, like button, run. Poor like button, what the no? In 2005, Eric Martin was working in a paper mill in Maine, and he had been working at this paper mill for... That's the only thing about his other videos. I can never hear what he's saying while that theme song is playing. I, I, I like that he's figured that out over the years. 20 years, and he was reaching up to get something on a shelf when he threw his back out. And in fact, he had slipped a number of discs, and it ultimately meant he was not able to work anymore. He was going to be disabled. And so he's suddenly out of work. His wife, Shelly Martin, was not working at the time, but when he couldn't work, she needed to get a job. And so Shelly, who had not worked in a long time, was able, through some connections, to land a job in her hometown in Maine called Palmyra. Palmyra was a very small, rural Palmyra. community. I mean, we're talking maybe 1,200 people that lived there. I did butcher the pronounce it. That's Palmyra. By Palmyra. I'm a freaking tard. Words are difficult, people, all right? They also had a 17-year-old There's too damn many of them. daughter named Chelsea who was not eager to go, but it was the only place they could afford, and so they had to go. Luckily, because Palmyra was such a cheap place to live relative to where they had been living, that for less money, they actually ended up getting a bigger piece of property than they had lived in before. Oh, yeah. It's this beautiful farmhouse that sat on a whole bunch of acreage but it was incredibly isolated. You had to go down this bumpy access road to get to their long driveway. And then once you were on the property, you'd look out and it was just a full 360 degrees of very dense forest that virtually no one was in. There was no nature trails. It was just dark, dense forest everywhere you looked. So even though no one's that happy about it, they end up moving into this farmhouse, and as they're unpacking their truck, Eric picks up one of his many rifles that he owned. Eric came from a long line of hunters. He loved to hunt. It was his favorite thing to do, and he had a whole bunch of guns that he kept. And as you got plenty of land to do it now, but he's carrying the rifle into the house. Shelly says, oh no, we're not keeping the guns in the house. You have a barn. You're going to put your guns in there. This had always been a point of contention for them in their... I mean, I, I understand. 
some people just do not feel safe with guns in the house, but I would feel less safe with my guns out in the barn where anything could happen. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I don't know about every barn in the world, but barns are not that hard to break into. They're, they're not. If somebody wanted a gun, you're not going to probably hear them from the house breaking into your barn, taking your guns, probably walking into your house and shooting you in the face. So I would be more scared with them out in the barn. Marriage. Shelly just didn't feel safe having guns in the house, especially having kids in there. And so ultimately, Eric agrees, okay, fine, I won't put my guns in the house. I'll put them in the barn. And so he went in the barn and he and his son, Sean, who he had come out to help him, they built this gun case for all of his rifles. It was very heavy duty. They put it in the barn and then they locked that and then locked the barn itself. So they were totally secure in the barn, but definitely not readily accessible. Over that first year, Shelly and Eric developed this ritual where at the end of the day, they would go out on the front porch of their farmhouse and look out onto the front yard and they would drink coffee. It was something they both looked forward to and virtually every night they did this. And so Thank almost you. exactly a year after moving in, it was in early 2006, Shelly and Eric are sitting on their front porch, enjoying their coffee, they're chatting, and Shelly thinks she sees something in the woods. Now, you have to understand the layout and how far away they are from the woods to get a sense of what they were seeing. Right in front of their porch was a gravel road where they parked their cars. About 20 meters away from their house to the left is their barn. And beyond the barn, basically straight out from the porch, is this huge open field where there's no trees or anything. It was like open grazing area. And then way beyond the field was the beginning of this tree line of this really dense forest. So we're talking at least a couple hundred meters away where she sees these lights. And she described it as like a pulsating light. It did not look like a car or some sort of vehicle, not to mention there was no road out straight ahead from their porch. It was just a dense forest where there was absolutely no one that should have been in there. Eric immediately, mm. when he sees the lights, he thinks there's a poacher on his property, someone illegally hunting on his property. And so he gets Sean, his son- Yeah, you gotta nip that shit in the butt real quick, but fuck that shit. Sean, who did not live with them, but was staying the night that night, he gets him to come outside and say, hey, do you think that's a poacher down there at the edge of our tree line? And Sean's like, I don't know, maybe. Eric decides that he wants to go tell this person to leave his property. And so he asked Sean to come with him. They figured they would just get to the edge of the property and yell out, hey, this is private property, you need to leave. As they're walking across the field and they're getting closer to the tree line, the lights, those pulsating lights begin to fade and disappear back into the woods. And they get all the way up to the tree line and they can't see any lights at all. Even though at this point, standing on the edge of the forest, Eric and Sean are fairly confident that this poacher has left. They decide just to be sure, let's walk a little ways into the woods, even though it's totally dark, we're not gonna get lost. We'll walk a little ways into the woods and just continue to yell, this is private property, so they really do leave. And so they begin walking and it's, and it's a very dense forest, lots of low hanging limbs. It's not somewhere that's easy to walk. There's no walking trails or anything like that. And they walk, you know, 10, 15 meters into the woods and then they hear what sounds like someone walking parallel to them, maybe 15 meters away from them on their left. And they both stop and they look. All right, I would be creeped the hell out by now. Weird ass lights. Now the lights are just gone, and now you hear someone walking fairly close to you. <sighs> Bro, I'd be having one of my guns with me. They didn't want to take any chance that they were being stalked by a predator. And so they thought, you know what? The lights are gone. I don't know what animal this is. Let's just get out of here. About a month goes by and Nathan, who is Chelsea's boyfriend, was staying with the family at the farm. And it was the first nice spring day. I mean, it was a very dark and dreary winter. Maine winters tend to be that way. Yes. And so that weekend, Nathan and Chelsea decide, let's go walk around the woods. So they take the two family dogs and they start walking across that big field in front of the house into the forest, the same area where Sean and Eric have been looking for those lights and then heard what sounded like an animal that was near them. And so at first, Chelsea has the dogs on leashes, but they get to the forest and she lets them off their leash to let them go run around and go crazy because they've been cooped up because of the winter time as well. The two dogs instantly take off running for about 100 meters and then they come to a dead stop right outside this big mound. It looks like a dirt mound, but they get up close to it and they can tell that it's actually more like a den. There are these huge pieces of wood that have been leaned into like a lean-to type structure with moss and dirt and grass put all over the outside. I mean, it looks like a very intentionally made mound 
and there's a circular hole that's been created right on the front of it and the dogs have stopped right outside and they're poking their heads what kind of crazy ass shit I mean, do, do wolves actually do shit like that? Will they, like, move stuff around and make a den like that? I thought they just kind of, like, found places. I mean, I don't know. I'm not a wolf. I've never been raised by wolves. I was probably, I don't know, I might have been. My mom says I was. But I didn't know they actually, like made dens like that i thought they would just find like a little alcove and like maybe or dig some dig a hole and maybe throw some brush around or something i didn't know they would actually like go all out like a freaking bird's nest and then smelling into this hole and nathan and chelsea are looking at this thinking who did this is this like a hunter's thing? Is this something a hunter might make? Would an animal make this? This seems really big for some animal to make this, but it definitely was made on purpose, whatever it is. And so Nathan, he just kind of looks down into this den, but it's totally dark. And he thinks he hears growling coming from inside of the den. And so without any hesitation, he goes, we gotta go. I don't know what's living in there, but we gotta go. And so they take the dog. It's a fucking werewolf, bro. The wind to go. It's time to go. And I wouldn't deal with that shit. I've, I burn dogs. They put them back on leashes, and the two of them. Yes, my go-to thing is set the shit on fire. Fire cleanses everything, but I'm telling you, them get out of the forest as quickly as they can. When Nathan and Chelsea came back to the house, they told Eric and Shelley, and actually Sean was there too. And they said, "Hey, we found this den of some kind out in the middle of the woods, basically straight out from your front porch." And that's when Eric and Sean said, "Well, about a month ago, we were out in that same area." and we could have sworn we heard some animal stalking us. A couple of months go by and Eric and Shelly are sitting on their front porch having their coffee ritual and there was just this low mist that kind of hung over the entire field. And as they're sitting there, they're commenting on how creepy it was. And what started as just kind of a friendly discussion about the general creepiness took a turn when they realized that they couldn't hear any wildlife. No crickets, no animals, no anything. And normally at night, because they were out here all the time, it was humming with life. And so Shelly had this high powered flashlight that she always had out with her and she starts scanning the property, not knowing what she's looking for, but it just seemed really odd that they couldn't hear any wildlife. But after- Yeah, you get used to the ambient noise. I mean, sometimes, you know, you kind of tune it out, but to actually be listening for it and not hear it when you know it should be there, Crickets never shut the fuck up when you want them to. They only shut up when there's something around, you know what I mean? <laughs> she scans across the whole field, she doesn't see anything, and so she puts her flashlight down and just starts talking to Eric about whatever they normally talked about over coffee at night. Eric would say in numerous interviews that for whatever reason, when she put that flashlight down, he suddenly felt like they were in danger. He's looking out, he doesn't see anything, and then all of a sudden he just says, you know what? We gotta go inside. I don't know what it is, but we gotta go inside. And Shelly's like, come on, I wanna stay out here for a little bit longer. We'll go in in a few minutes. Trust that gut feeling, bud. Always trust the gut feeling. Minutes. And Eric stands up and he's like, no, go inside. And he tries to grab her to kind of push her into the house. And she's kind of fighting against him. And then all of a sudden, Shelly stops. And she goes, did you hear that? And Eric immediately knew that whatever it was, it's the reason he had that sudden feeling of being in danger. Eric turns around and he can't stand. So I guess I said, get your fucking ass in the house now. You're going to die. I'm like, look, do what you want, bud. I'm going in. I know what, I, I know something bad's about to happen. You want to stay out here and be some sort of sacrifice? Do you, bro? I'm not. You got me fucked up, Holmes. Anything, because it's too dark. Shelly grabs her flashlight and she begins scanning the tree line. And she gets to the field and gets about halfway across the field right in front of them and she stops. Because right in the middle of the field are three creatures that look like wolves. These huge creatures that are looking right at them. Two others join them. So there's five wolf-like creatures that are staring at them right from the middle of their field. She says to Eric, what are those? And Eric, who's an experienced hunter, he has no idea. He goes, I think they're bears. It could be wolves, we gotta go inside. And so Shelly's just holding the light and they start charging directly at her so fast that she wasn't able to keep the light on them. 
They were already halfway across the field. They go inside, they shut the door, and they lock it. And without saying a word, the two of them make their rounds across the entire bottom floor, lock every window, close every blind, make sure everything is shut. There was something different about these five creatures. The way they started running towards them, it just felt like they were targeting Eric and Shelley. And so even after the house had been secured, they didn't feel safe. And so they're standing in the middle of their cabin and Eric's saying, my guns are in the, in the barn. I can't, we have no protection. And Shelly is like, whatever you do, do not go out there. We don't know what these are. It could be a bear. It could be a wolf. We don't know. Don't go out there. Shelly goes up. See, if I had all that and I had a barn and a house and, you know, the barn wasn't, I don't care how far away it is, I would have a tunnel. I would have a secret fucking tunnel that went from somewhere in the house to the barn Nope. You ain't catch me in my pants down. And if you do catch me in my pants down, there's going to be something pointed at your face. That sounded really fucked up whenever I said that. I was talking about a gun, not, not. Let's move on. Upstairs, she shuts off all the lights. She makes sure all the windows are shut. And then she goes to Chelsea's room, her daughter, and she wakes her up and she says, hey, come here, you got to look at this. And they go to the window and they kind of like poke. Hey, wake up, we're all going to die. Bye bye. It's fucking Wendigo. Their head into the window because they don't want to like totally open it up and stare out because they don't want the creatures to see them. But they're kind of poking their head out the window and she's like, look. And standing on the gravel are these five creatures that are just standing in a row looking directly at the house. It was like they were waiting for them to come out the front door. They were just patiently standing there. Hey, we were just talking some shit. Come out here and say it to our faces. We're going to rumble. We're going to get Thriller up in this bitch. Looking at the house, it did not look like normal animal behavior at all. And as she's looking, one of the animals looks up at Shelly in the window. And the creature stands on its two legs. It gets on its hind legs and looks at her. And Shelly gasps and falls over because the creature's like eight feet tall. And so Shelly... Fucking Wendigo. Or werewolf. No wonder the house is so fucking cheap. There's werewolves out there. Man, I hope you got some silver bullets for them guns, bud. Shelly's on the ground looking at Chelsea, and she can't... Right, that's what kills werewolves, right? Silver bullets. I can't believe what she just saw. It's like her brain can't process that this creature, one, had even seen her. They barely had their head up in the window. If it's a wolf of some kind, man, dogs have eyes that are better than... Ours, like they, they're going to, they can see a flea crawling out of their own butts. That they but that it stood on its hind legs, that it was so big. What are they doing sitting in a row right on the, on the outside of the house? Some Game of Thrones shit right there. Waiting for us? What's going on here? And so Shelly tells Chelsea, get in your Call Jon Snow. Bed, don't go to your windows. Don't leave this room. And that's when Shelly also remembers that she hasn't heard her two dogs. And she's worried they might be outside. And so she starts quietly walking all along the top floor looking for her dog. She's calling to her two dogs and they don't come out. Goes into the master bedroom and finds her two dogs hiding in the corner of the room next to each other. Aww. Like they're startled by whatever it is outside. Meanwhile, Eric was pacing downstairs. That's sad, man. Oh, it's gotta be something bad if the dogs are scared shitless like that. Dogs, dogs are usually down for whatever. You know, it's a dog eat dog world thinking he needed to go to the barn and he needed to get his guns to protect the family. Dig a tunnel. But he knew that between his own disability, he can barely walk very fast and he'd have to unlock the barn and then he'd have to pull down the gun case, unlock that. All the while, he's exposed to these animals that are out there. And so the next best thing in his... Plus, if they're like eight foot fucking tall, it's going to take quite a few bullets in the face to make sure they're dead. His mind is maybe he could... And they are evidently ungodly fast, man. I... Burn the house down during the day, not, not, not right now. Run outside, get in his truck and back the truck up to the front door. And then he could get his wife and his daughter to come out, jump in the car and they could drive away. So he just goes to the window and he pulls the blinds aside to look outside. And those five creatures are now gone. They're not sitting on the gravel path right in front of the house. 
He doesn't know where they are, but they're not in front of the house. And so he closes the blinds and he's like, well, I don't know where they are. It's too, it's too dangerous to go out there. He starts pacing some more and he goes back to look and he sees them back in the field where they first saw them, all five. You can see all five, they're facing the house still, but he can see them because the moon has now popped through and he's got illumination on the field and you can see all five. And he's like, okay, maybe if I just keep my eye on them, I can open the door, run out, get the car, back it up without okay. them seeing me. And so without telling Shelly, he opens the door and he goes onto the front porch and he sees them out in the field. He's got a good line of sight on them. Quiet as he can, he walks down the steps and he makes his way over to his truck, which is about 10 meters away. And as he's getting closer and closer to his truck, he's got his eye on the creatures that are in the field. They haven't moved. They apparently haven't seen him. He gets to the driver's side of his truck and he's got his keys out and he's kind of fumbling to hit the unlock button and then his motion sensor light kicks on. And he's so on edge being out there when the light kicks on, he drops his keys because he's so startled. And the first thing he does, he looks towards the field and he sees that one of the five creatures is now standing on its hind legs, looking at him directly. Before he even bends down to get his keys, he sees them all running towards him. He reaches down, he grabs his keys, he runs back to the house as fast as he can, and he gets inside and slams it right as he can hear them crossing the gravel right in front of the house. And he hears them bound onto the porch and start running around the wraparound porch. He's too scared to even look in the window, so he ducks down to get out of view. Shelly, who was upstairs, can hear everything going on, and she he yells, Eric, what's going on? And he goes, stay up. You're a fucking idiot. Why the fuck did you do that? It was leaving. Give it a couple more hours, they would have been gone. You're a fucking shit. Tomorrow morning, I'm getting divorced. Up there, stay up there. Shelly, Eric, Chelsea, everyone's just frozen, waiting knowing that these creatures are right on the other side, walking along his wraparound porch. And after a while, he hears the footsteps of these creatures leave the porch and go back onto the gravel area. And at some point he pokes his head up and he looks and all five are sitting there just facing the house, waiting for them to come out of the house. And so he scurries up the stairs to where Shelly and Chelsea are and they just are Fuck so that. scared. So they decide they gotta call the police. If nothing else, the police will drive up and their vehicle- The window goes, I've cut the phone lines, you're fucked vehicle might scare away these creatures but on the phone Shelly lets on what was the name of that uh werewolves within oh if you haven't watched that watch it it's fucking hilarious one that what they're really scared about is some thing on their property in fact it's five creatures things running around outside their property and immediately the police officer who's responding to this he's like all right well are you sure it's not a moose are you sure it's not a bear and finally she's like no can you no it's not a moose eh hey. If was a moose, I'd punch it in the face. Drink me some maple syrup, eh? Can you please just come over here? And he's like, listen, ma'am, just keep your door shut, keep your windows shut, and I'm sure it'll be fine. And ultimately, that's how the call ends. They're on their own. The family felt helpless. And I mean, okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Um, for one... I understand where the cops come from. It's like it's probably just like a pack of wild dogs or coyotes or some bullshit like that. I get, I get you. I got you, bro. But if these people are genuinely, genuinely scared, where they are calling the police, they're like, "Hey, there are some massive ass creatures out here. They've tried to attack us. We need help." Okay, instead of just being like, "Nah, bro, you on your own." Shouldn't you be more like, all right, ma'am, sir, whatever the case may be. I forget which one he said called. Uh, memory of a goldfish. Uh, that's not really our department, but I'll give you the number to animal control or I will get in contact with animal control or I will transfer you to animal control or whatever the bullshit, you know, whatever. But don't just leave them high and dry like that, bro. Like, that's bullshit. I would come there, I would kill whatever is hunting me, I would cut off its head, I would bring it there, and I would throw it at that son of a bitch. Fuck you, bud. Eric especially felt really frustrated because he can't protect his family. He doesn't have a weapon. He See, woman? This is why my guns needed to be with me. They should be in bed with me, not you. They could be saving our lives right now. I had old Charlie Dean. Charlie Dean.
She put a hole in you the size of a rotary wheel. Like, you'd never know what's coming. You'd never know what hits you because you'd be dead. Can't get to his vehicle. They're just trapped. And so they decide the only thing we can do is barricade ourselves. Go sleep. Fuck it. Like, it's a farmhouse. Most farmhouses have basements. I mean, they, they really do. Katie, bar the door. Go to the basement. Go sleep. Pocket. inside of the house and so for the next 30 minutes they put heavy furniture in front of all the doors and the windows they blocked everything as best as they could they got kitchen knives and they got an axe that they had inside to chop some wood as so they go upstairs they lock themselves in the master bedroom with their weapons and their dogs and they get on the bed and they just decide all we can do is wait until the sun comes up during the time they were barricading their house they would look out from time to time and they would see the five creatures just sitting on that gravel area right in front of their house just waiting for them when they finally went upstairs and barricaded themselves in that room they immediately heard the creatures move off of the gravel and they heard a couple of them at least walk onto the porch and start pacing around the porch and it's totally silent besides the sounds of these creatures and they were clearly communicating with each other they were bumping into walls and then they were howling at each other there was clear communication happening where they were trying to coordinate some sort of attack on the family now the way the house was set up is there was a second floor roof and then the first floor was a little bit wider than the second floor and had its own kind of separate roof. And after a while, the creatures stopped walking on the porch. They left the porch and it's just silence. And then they would hear them jump onto that first roof. The scary thing about this is that if you walked around the roof, you could actually look into the second floor windows. And so they're laying there and periodically they'd be looking out their window. There was windows on either side of the room they were in, but there was a thin curtain between them and the window. And so from time to time, these creatures would walk past their windows and they would stop. They'd put their paws up onto the window and they would look inside but there was a very thin sheet between them and the glass. So they couldn't, they couldn't see the creature and the creature couldn't see them. All night, they're listening to these creatures running around. I would have shit myself. I would have literally shit the bed. And sometimes they'd hear really loud scratching, like they had figured something out and they were trying to burrow their way into the house. But after a whole night of this, they never actually- Bro, I, no, I see, I would not be able to handle that. I, I wouldn't, I, no. No, I would not be able to handle that at all. They're either going to have to kill me or I'm going to have to kill them. I would have went outside with the axe and just start swinging wildly. I guarantee you they're going to kill me, but I place fucking money. They're not limping away without a scratch. For sure. Bo show. Something's going to have an axe up its ass. We broke the glass. They never got inside the house. As the sun started to come up in the morning, the creatures jumped off the roof and they could hear them running away. And for about an hour, they didn't hear anything outside. The sun's come up and they felt safe again. And so they left their room. They go downstairs and they finally open it up. And all over their property are signs of huge creatures that had been in their property. Massive footprints with huge claws at the end. They found tufts of hair that had gotten caught on fence posts. And even scarier is they found all these points on the house, in particular on the second floor when they were walking on that roof, where there was clear markings that they had tried to burrow into the house. There were these deep seated scratch marks into the side of the house. The front door had been scratched apart. I mean, it was very clear. Be taking that out of a wolf's ass. Hey, mm -mm. you fuck it up, you fixing it, bud. That whatever these creatures were, they were trying to get into the house, but they had just been unsuccessful. This experience was so traumatic for the family that they sold the house and they moved very quickly after that. And they have not experienced anything like that since they left. So what do you think those creatures were? Was that a bear, a wolf, or something else? Let me know in the comments what you think and I will get back to all the early commenters. So get in there and give me your best theory. If you enjoyed this video- A motherfucking Wendigo, bud. Werewolves, it was some, it was one, the other. Fucking care. It had to be one or the other. Or them weird ass wolves off of fucking Game of Thrones. Fuck that. That's some crazy shit. What y'all think it was? How many people think it was a Wendigo or a werewolf? Other than me. Don't leave me by myself. 
All right. That was amazing. I like that story. And if you guys like that story, why don't you go on down there and leave us a thumbs up? That's right. Mm -hmm. Get down there with a brushy boo boo. Told you, it's a weird one. Holidays make me weird. I'm slightly tired from cooking all day. It's cold. I know of y'all a couple of times. I, I am actually really quite sleepy. I'm not even going to lie. It's almost past my bedtime. All right. If y'all enjoyed today's video, please leave a thumbs up. If you're a fan of the spooky, scary, strange, deranged, or the fact that Wendigos try to come into your house and eat your boom boom while you sleep at night, think about subscribing. And I guarantee you we'll find a way to defeat those evil, nasty Wendigos once and for all. As always, be good to one another. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. And like I was saying earlier, please, everyone, have safe travels. It is the holiday season. Be safe. Be cautious. Be careful. And most of all, enjoy yourselves too much. Eat way too much food. Get presents, give presents, and enjoy the holidays. And if you're someone who doesn't celebrate Christmas, but celebrates one of the other holidays of this time of year, I don't know them all, or I would go into more detail, but it is what it is. Be safe. Be happy. Have fun. As always, be good one another. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. It was a fucking. <gasps> what if it was Krampus? A bunch of Krampuses. Cramp eye. Cramp. 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 Whatever the plural of Krampus is. Krampusy. Cramps. Cramp eye. Krampus. 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 It was a bunch of Krampus.